Hey guys, this is episode 12 of my journey, Beat Freaks edition. So I want to talk about Beat Freaks because you guys flooded my inbox. I was like, Beat Freaks, Beat Freaks, what is this? What is Perler? And I was like, holy smokes. I'm like, you guys actually watch those videos? And I don't know, was it because I flashed one of these or um, I flashed one of these guys or what was it? But let me answer all your questions right now. So let's start with, um, because I have all the supplies on my left side in front of me, um, it's everywhere. So Perler is a brand name, Perler Beads. There's a thousand beads inside each bag. I've counted them before. There's a thousand, hundred percent sure. Okay, never short, never extra in them. Okay, so there's different colors to uh, that they offer I have over 30 types so I have this one I have this one and if you see my snapchat I have a huge Rubbermaid container loaded with it so um, yeah also follow me on snapchat t-o-k-i underscore xd so it's toki underscore xd so um, those are the beats where do I store them um, for the people that uh, when I started, I stored them um, in little craft boxes from Michaels. So I bought this. Um, they have dividers you can remove and stuff like that. So I have that going on. Or you can get the bigger one, which I did upgrade to the bigger one. Then I started going holy smokes. Started using a bunch of mixing bowls and uh, small mixing bowls that I have at home. And I use that. So I recently bought storage jars from the Perler company. They hold 6,000 beads. The whites is a very common, very common uh, bead that you will need in constructing uh, your artwork. Um, also black. So these are half full. And so 3,000. I'm waiting on my supply. So let's get down to, uh, um, let me showcase some of the designs before I get to the details on how to make them. So I showed you the ghost. Um, this is the Super Mario ghost. I started making these as a, because they're simple. You can find the images online and um, just use them as guidelines. So they have keychains attached to it. Here's the one up. Um, this one's cool. Here's the Super Mario mushroom. Um, that one's cool too. Um, Mega Man, everyone knows that one. Then you have the the Bubble Dragons, and if you have an NES Classic, you probably played this game. So this is awesome because they're fridge magnets. So you can make them into keychains or fridge magnets. They're they're all good. Um, retro gaming is what I started on because the images were already pixelated and simple to put together. Then you have Galaga. I don't know if you guys played Galaga, but I've played enough of that one. And here's the enemies that come down. Um, there's more here. It's keychain. And here's a very small keychain. Um, then if you want to like uh, play games with me, then, then grab a controller. Or if you really want to go into fantasy, like just beam me up. You know what I mean? And if, if you really want to go retro and I'm like, hey man, I'm a sneakerhead. You got Jordans or something? Got it right there. Um, and then if you just don't want the head form or puny characters, you can start upgrading them to a slightly bigger character and have these guys stuck on the wall um, with all different types of uh, Mario theme stuff. Or if you're a Dragon Ball fan, then you can just make one of these guys. Then... I don't know, I can make one with a fireball coming out. That's a little bit more detailed. Or if you a little big planet fan, you can play this guy. Um, I use the darker beads. I should have used a lighter one. Then, then if you want to go back to the future, then you have one of these time machines. Then you also can make uh, coasters. Um, you can then attach rubber grips so they don't slide all the time on the coffee table, but 
If there's a red shell, you know you have to chuck the red shell and it has to go darting at, at your enemy. So if someone needs a closer, boom, got it. So you can get in trouble by doing that or hurt someone. So I don't advise you to do that. Just be careful where you chuck it. So if you want to get detailed with coasters, you can add a frame, um, translucent beads, then you can do that one. These ones are a little bit bigger. Um, then you can add rubber grips to it. Then you got one of these guys. Then if you really want to go from different series of the game, then you got this. So there's a lot of it. Um, then for gifts, you can give them as gifts, but if you don't want to give them as a gift, you can just get some gold rope and hang up some uh, ornaments. So there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, my first um, uh, logo that I made was uh, this Bad City logo, and I tagged them on it on Instagram. They liked it. I wish they commented. But uh, that's when I started up doing all these things and I started getting um, better and better and better, which led to my first big piece, uh, one of the first, which is um, Pikachu, Team Rocket Pikachu. Um, I don't know if it's correct size like this or like that, but as you can see, it's pixelated. It's my first one, but everyone can see the image. That's what I was trying to achieve. So. This requires uh, a lot of work. Then I've seen people online make uh, like real people. I was like, oh, that's that's crazy. I want to do that. So my one of my first pieces, Notorious B.I.G. Rest in peace. And there you go. Then later down the road, when I saw Straight Outta Compton, I wanted to make um, make uh, one like this, Easy E. Rest in peace of this guy too. Um, and also if you check out my Instagram account, bead underscore freaks, so bead freaks, you would see the Michael Jackson one I made. So I don't know why they're all dead, but these guys are all dead. Um, but I will make a live one. Maybe Snoop Dogg might be my next one. I'm not sure. So let's get down to how I piece these things together. So let's talk about the pegboards. So the pegboards come in uh, different sizes, different unique um, things you can do with it. So pegboards like this. Um, uh, let me show you real quick. Uh, maybe on a different video I'll show you how to how to um, put it. Maybe a time lapse video. But um, for this one, these are the pegboards. Um, if you have more than one, you can attach them. So the Pikachu one I attached a bunch put them together um, and you have this size if you have pieces that fit within this grid this is perfect for that um, okay so when you get to a bigger piece and all your pegboards are down on the table um, I'll just talk quickly um, tips and tricks put um, a cardboard piece of paper underneath all, all of these before placing them down um, it has to be sturdy not something that will just fold when you lift it um, put it down so when you fill up this whole grid say for the smaller pieces um, for the smaller pieces you have this uh, parchment paper or wax paper so for single boards you put the piece here flat like that then you iron it in circular motions evenly until the beads melt together and when this is done you have to hold it with um, I use books so I put a book here and then I flip it and when you flip it, you release it, then remove this piece, put another piece of parchment paper, and then iron that side. So when you iron both sides, it's like this. So pretend this image is right here. It's right there. Place it on. You iron it. Flip it. Then you, because it's on the book, you remove it slowly. Then you put parchment paper on top, then you iron it until it melts together. So that's what you do. But when a bunch of these pegboards are um, attached together, uh, you need a thing bigger than a book or else when you flip it and it's going to go like this and it's going to pop all your beads and ruin your masterpiece like big time and that will piss you off.
but even before you flip it, when it's all on the grid, you have the cardboard underneath, you take painter's tape, go like this, and you, you tape each row of beads and overlap them until it's one sheet over. So when you flip it over, um, it doesn't shift all the beads. So it keeps the shape, keeps the image and everything. It, it works well. So when you tape it, flip it. Then underneath, take out every single board, then put the parchment paper and iron it as quick as possible and evenly because half of these things, when they start cooling off, they start bending. And when they bend, they don't stay down to glue the next section together. So it's a lot of work. So what do I use to uh, um, put the stuff on the boards? So this is a Perler brand scoop with that. So the beads stick here, then you place them on the board. I use dollar store tweezers, easy to pick, faster. Or you can use a Perler bead pen. You load it up in here, it comes down here, and you line it up and drop the beads onto the pegboards. So, um, pricing and all that stuff, it's supplies, labor, and all that stuff. If you can find it cheaper elsewhere, um, they probably mass produced it and they're just trying to get rid of it. But I do put a lot of work into this. So if you guys are interested in any, just shoot me a message. Logos are very difficult. The images have to be clear. I can't transfer every single image you send me. So I do have difficulties with them. So you just have to send me the image and I'll see what I can do. If I can't do anything about it, then I will let you know. I'll tell you the truth. So that is probably as much detail I'll get into with that. And I will be posting uh, videos after I get my supplies. Um, maybe a time lapse or an actual video showing how I construct all the beads and iron it together. So that is all on Bead Freaks. Um, and thank you for tuning in for episode 12, Bead Freaks edition of my journey. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs>